just to remind you the lipoproteins, the chylomicrons taking fat from the gut and to the peripheral tissues, to the liver again, and then HDL from the peripheral tissues to the liver. If we look at the lipid ratios in the nephal patients, there is increase in very low VLDL, increase in LDL, and very low in HDL in nephal patients. <clears throat> so this, we call it the lipid overflow hypothesis for the pathogenesis of liver fat accumulation. Because of the diet, increase in calorie diets and insulin resistance, leading to increased circulating free fatty acids and these carbohydrate excess and saturated fatty acids leading to de novo lipogenesis and the lipoprotein breakdown products. <clears throat> There's an increased traffic of fat, fatty free, facet, free fatty acid into the hepatocytes with reduced ability to oxidation and to and the VLDL. So there is a accumulation of fat in the liver leading to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or simple steatosis. Next step is the simple steatosis to steatohepatitis. From a simple steatosis, then there's a recruitment of macrophages leading to inflammation, a chronic inflammation, which leads to fibrosis. There is also a genetic factor involving in this complex situation, but I'm not going into, going into detail about that. So this is a picture showed by Professor Wen I also. The inflammation due to the senescence you know, cells, hepatocytes due to the fat accumulation, the damage cell leading to DEMS or damage associated molecular patterns leading to inflammation and then fibrosis. As I said, the visceral fat is close to the portal system and they are exposed to gut microbiota and the endotoxins leading to lipolysis and fatty acid accumulation in the liver. I would like to test about a microbiome and nephal. Now people are talking more and more about this microbiome with gut liver axis and with dysbiosis, that is the changing in this gut population can lead to fatty accumulation in the liver because of the endotoxins produced by the gut microbiome. And also, there is an altered bile acid metabolism in nephal. As I has said, nephal D is a precursor of the metabolic syndrome because they share a common soil. Metabolic syndrome and nephal, they share a common soil of obesity and insulin resistance. So, so metabolic syndrome can lead to nephal D, and nephal D can also cause metabolic syndrome. Before Nephal, we thought there is a double hit theory. Now, as I've said, there is a complex, complex metabolic process going on. So there is not only two hits, there is a multiple parallel hit to have this steatosis and NASH, including the endotoxins, the adipokines, the microbiota, the diet, the pro-inflammatory cytokines, the genetics, the epigenetics, insulin resistance, obesity. I would like to remind you this, that NFLD is, although NFLD is uh, harmless, the NASH can lead to progressive fibrosis, cirrhosis, malignant change. Without orthotopic liver transplantation, there is a chance of uh, there is a, now there is an increasing chance of liver transplantation for nephal NASH patients. The key histologic predictors of mortality in nephal, 
The worst is advanced fibrosis, simple steatosis. The prognosis is not bad. In summary, so nephil is a complex multi-hit pathogenesis involving genetics and multiple organ systems. Your diet, rich in fructose, and <clears throat> poor polysaturated fats, obesity, and this gut, gut microbiota leading to the fatty acid flux to the liver, and then with a reduction in lipid oxidation and lipid ex export by VLDL, we had a lipid accumulation in the liver with the added inflammation, NASH, and with the added fibrosis leading to cirrhosis and ACC. So in summary, hepatic triglyceride accumulation never is attributable to excess synthesis and uptake of fatty acid by the liver, which is not compensated by oxidation and secretion. And the pathogenesis is multifactorial. Insulin resistance can explain only some of the metabolic findings, but not all the mechanisms leading to nephil. Genetics and microbiomes are the key contributors for nephil and to NASH. With that, thank you much. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Seafarm. Caring for well-being.